listening to the Built to Grow podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Built to Grow podcast. I'm your host, Tim Lyons, in studio. <laughs> Joined, as always, by Randy Angstead. What's up, man? How are we doing, brother? Got that radio voice. Ooh. <laughs> Tickling the ear, Joe. Just so you guys know, every episode before we start <laughs> recording, before we like start the show, we always whisper uh, naughty things to, <laughs> to, to our uh, editor and the uh, other side of the... Uh, <laughs> Got to keep things exciting. Yeah. Well, after well, two... That's, that's why we're dying laughing every single time we start the how show. How many episodes is this? What are we on now? Uh, uh, 207, I think. 207, 208, somewhere. Yeah. Hey, for anybody that's listening, that's doing podcasts, hey, can you feel our pain? 200 episodes trying to come up with a new topic every single time. And guess what? We got another one for you. <laughs> uh, but before we get too deep in the weeds, I do want to make sure that you know about the Fitness Growth Summit, the, the Pro Fit, Fit Pro Growth Summit. It's uh, May 21st and 22nd, Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, we're selling tickets fast. I think we're in the 30s already. Oh yeah, uh, and, and the price just keeps going up. So yeah, by the time this that's the that's at recording. By the time you guys hear this, we're probably going to be th almost through our early bird per, uh, tickets. Yeah, so it's time to jump on there. Go to winninggym.com slash Scottsdale. Grab a seat at the show. Uh, great event. If you haven't heard us talk about it before, uh, it, it's it's a room full of gym owners all looking to grow. Right. So yep. it's. It's uh, anybody that's making a quarter million or more. That's kind of the threshold to get into the room. Um, last time it was 400,000. We did lower it, uh, obviously, because of the situation everybody faced. Uh, and, we're, and we're just in growth mode. So come to the event to, to learn, to grow, to share, contribute. Uh, we're having breakouts and networking and food drinks. It's it's a great event. So not like your standard, you know, yeah. nothing against the, the seminars, the bigger seminars. It's a little bit tighter and... You know, we got some sponsors this year, mm -hmm. so it's a it's a good. It, I'm excited for it. What not to expect? This is not your typical fitness conference where we're going to talk about kettlebell swings and movement patterns or tech. Not well, maybe technology, but this is the business of fitness. This is where you're going to come and you're going to talk about strategies when it comes to overall understanding of marketing. Not shiny ball tactics. Use this funnel. Buy this campaign. That's not what you're. We're going to be teaching. So. If you're ready to learn how to effectively change your business for the better with like-minded individuals, this is what that's for. Yeah, and I would even go even further than that. It's going to be even more than just fitness, right? We're talking life. We're talking oh, yeah, uh, yeah. different, doing different things because we've got some speakers that are going to come talk about then the next thing after your gym, right? Like the gym's great. Maybe you've got two, five, ten locations, but what's what's what else are you doing? So good event, winninggym.com slash Scottsdale. Make sure to uh, to grab your ticket now. All right. So another another episode, new topic. So this this topic stemming from uh, a conversation that's happened in the fitness uh, gosh. My, my, the business talk for fitness professionals. Yeah, group on it's Facebook, a long our, our group on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Business talk with fitness professionals Facebook group. If you're not in that group, go join that. Uh, we get about you know five to seven uh, every couple of days. People joining in there, all gym owners. Uh, the question came up: It's like, hey, where are you guys finding spin bikes? And then it, you know, as the conversation went along, it's like hey. the second second part of that question mm -hmm. in the same question. Yeah. Yeah. And same original post. Yeah. It was, uh, um, for anybody who has brought cycle in or how are you, or are you generating revenue with it? And then essentially like, are you including it in memberships or is it an additional, you know, charge yeah. or service? Yeah. And while I can understand the appeal to bring in new profit centers and I can understand the appeal to diversify and try to get different things and add ons and things like I can appreciate that. I do have to throw a word of caution to anybody that's thinking that you're going to compete with a spin studio or a yoga studio on the same level. You're just not going to. Unless that's your core business, mm -hmm. you're probably not going to compete. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't you know, investigate it to see if this is something that uh, you should add because maybe yeah. maybe you could do it well, but you're not going to compete for the same level of clientele. It's just it, 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 the flip side of that. It's like a yoga studio trying to do personal training. They're not going to compete with you on that no. level. So 
that's the first, you know, word of caution would be like, Hey, you know, is this really at our core? Is this what we do? Is yoga what we do? Is it, is, is spin what we do? And the answer is probably not, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't investigate it. Correct. Okay. And so anytime a new opportunity for a new profit center comes up, I always sit back and ask four questions. And I want you guys to write these down, these four questions. You can use them anytime something like this is presented. Somebody's coming in to pitch supplements. Somebody's trying to get you to buy a new piece of equipment. Somebody's saying, hey, you should do spin. Or one of your clients says, hey, you should you do yoga in this, right? Yeah. In, you know, in this other room. You're not using the other room. Why don't you do yoga? Why don't you do massage therapy in there? The four questions are this. Number one, do I believe in it? Like, do I, do I believe this is, do I believe in it? Right. There's a lot of gimmicks. There's a lot of like, you know, snake oil out sure. there, especially when it comes to supplements and, and like things like that. There's a lot of snake. Oil. Do you, do you believe in it? Okay. If you can't stand behind it, that's the end of the day. Oh, well, sorry. Yep. It's not for us. Maybe like a power plate comes to mind. Like, I don't believe in the power plate. Yeah. Maybe there's some science, but are you going to put your flag in the ground and stick all, yeah. Stand by all of your belief on that. Yep. 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 So it, well, exactly. So the, the power plate, nothing against power plate. If you have a power plate, great. Awesome. But do I, I don't personally believe it. I don't use it. And yeah, maybe there's some studies around it, but who did the studies? The guys that paid for it was maybe from the power plate company. I don't know. You got to look at, you got to look sure. at through the lines here. Right. Um, again, nothing against power plate. There's, uh, there's other tools out there. Like, give me some examples. Like Zumba. Zumba sure. came. So we had an instructor come in. Hey, you guys should do Zumba. And like, I don't believe in Zumba. Like, that's not what we do. So do you believe in it? Number two, and probably a close second, but not first, is will my clients get better results? Okay. If you believe in it, but the clients are going to get better results with it, well, then probably don't. Yeah, what's the point? What's the point? Right. What's the point? Your job as the pro, like the fit personal trainer, the business owner, is to deliver results, <laughs> right? If you're not doing that, is that the business word? Oh yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're if we're building widgets, the the widget <laughs> is the result for your client. So number one, do I believe in it? Number two, will my clients get better results? Number three, can we make money from this? Now this isn't always the the answer, yes or no. Maybe it's it's retention. Sure. Um, and I'm going to give you an example of, of one of the things that we did make a purchase on because of those, it hit all sure. four. Uh, and can I sell it, right? Just because you believe in it, your clients get results from it, there's money to be made in it, you can't move the product or you can't sell this idea to your end client, um, then, then it's pointless. And you know, I like how you have those broken apart because making money and selling it are still two different things. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. If you can't sell it, right, if, or if your coaches don't believe in it, that goes back to one, number one. Mm -hmm. Well, because, I mean, I think of like, you know, can I make money on it? Sure. I mean, you know, think about products or supplements, right? Are there margins? Like mathematically, cool. Cool. It checks that box. But that doesn't mean that I can get it off my shelf. Correct. You know, those are yeah. two different problems. Yeah. So be, can I, I'm glad. Can I sell it? So the, the one of the things that comes to mind is um, the in body for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the in-body is an expensive piece of equipment. Absolutely. The 570, there's a 700 version. I think there's even a 200 version, um, the model number. But do I believe in? Yes, I believe that if we're here to get results for clients, we need the state-of-the-art technology that can prove and track our clientele. So the in-body check that box. Uh, will it help my clients get better results? Absolutely. The Knowing where you're at, or if you're, you know, need, you're tracking in the wrong direction, you can fix it, yeah. right? Help, help my clients get better results. Um, can we uh, can we sell it? Now, there wasn't anything to sell here because we're not profiting from the in-body. Now, I know some people do sell the in-body scans. In, in fact, we do for non-members. Yeah, I know. You guys have them available for walk-ins or something. Yeah, and can we make more money from <clears throat> it? And the more money is retention, 100%. So I want to throw a caveat into that because this is something that you guys do really well. Mm -hmm. And I know it, we talk about it when there are those services or, or aspects you want to bring into a business or you're thinking about it's all of those things can happen, but you have to work it into the business. 
You know, you could bring that embody in. And if you don't then make your your clients aware that data is how we're getting the result, or, you know, the data is impacting the results and vice versa, mm -hmm. then it's not, you know what I mean? Then it's not actually going to impact the business like it. you feel like it's going to, Correct, you know yeah. what I mean? A lot of times we have the best of intentions to bring something in and we buy it, it's sitting there but nothing happens with you it. Know, maybe we don't know how to integrate it into our training or how to sure. make the conversation, you know, like, cool, it's great. But if, if our clients aren't doing in-body check weigh-ins. Yeah, we build it into the process. It's into the, exactly. Yeah, it's integrated yeah. into the business. And like we would describe the program, right? That's one of the aspects. Aspects. It's one of the spokes on the wheel. It's not just the in-body gets results. It's, it's in not the corner, just the work. Does. Exactly, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's important. Make sure that that's... You know, mm -hmm. part of the conversation as well. How is this going to, you know, be integrated into the business too? Good, good point. Yeah. So uh, another great example is the yoga thing. So when we moved into this location, we mm -hmm. had a room. This was it. Yeah. Yeah. This, <laughs> this was part of it. Uh, we had a room that was set aside for yoga and spin. Okay. And I knew better, but the space was big and we didn't need all the space. So we, phys we built out a little studio that we were going to do a hybrid between yoga and spin. And the, the reason I did, okay, now I made the mistake, exactly the first point in this whole thing is like, look, I've been there, so I get it, I understand investigating it and everything. I went ahead and did it and still was wrong. So take, you know, take this as words <laughs> of advice not to do this. But we pulled our clients. We're like, mm -hmm. hey, we're thinking about doing all this stuff in the new place. And it was a lot of stuff, right? Smoothie bar was in there spin, yoga, you know, stretch therapy, muscle therapy, massage. Like we, we had all these things that we were thinking about and we threw it out to the the audience, right? And like and they came back, yoga was number one and spin was number two. It's like, oh, well. No brainer. That's what they a want. No brainer. Yoga doesn't take any equipment, but spin does. So I had to put a little investment and we got like 15 bikes or something. And when we first moved over here, I was like, well, I don't necessarily want to charge for it because you know, these are great clients and, you know, we'll just, it's not going to cost us much to, to, to do this and, you know, whatever. So we gave it to him and it was great. It blasted off. Like, you know, I'd walk by the room and be so yeah. smiling ear to ear. Like, look at all these people in here. They're loving it. They're spinning. The music is jamming. We're like, cool. And then you go out to the other room and there's semi-private training's going on. It's like, boom, awesome. And then boot camp would roll in and music is blasting, high fives, chest bumps. Oh, and then we, you know, come back later in the day, the yoga's, oh, Zen, very nice. <laughs> we look at the yoga going on. And we would bring in these instructors from all these other studios and they would come in and we would pay them per session or whatever. And it slowly started to kind of drop off a little bit. The newness, the shininess kind of wore off. Yeah. And, and we started started walking through there and it was like, ah, it looks like a down day today. You know, all right, well, maybe tomorrow will be better. And then it got to the point where I was open up, we had like a 5 a.m., you know, spin class or five thirty it was. And I was up here early, you know, mm -hmm. opening the smoothie bar. And that was back when I was in the in the grind every day. And, you know, three or four days go by and there's nobody in that class. And the guy and he's sitting there waiting, you know, he's spinning in there because he was Just gonna get he a does. workout. Yeah. He's gonna get a workout, but there's nobody in there. And I started thinking and I was like, man, okay, this isn't working. And this was only four or five months into the game. And I was like, man, what is going on? So I started talking to the clients like, hey, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there tomorrow and trying to get in a back, yeah, you know, re like, sure. what's going on? And finally it was like, this is a waste, you know, three people in there on 15 bikes. Like, what's the point of this? And I took it away. I was like, screw yep. it. We're done. And I had more people cancel their memberships. Look at, listen to how logical this is. We gave it to them for free. They came, they stopped coming to it, and there was nobody else in these in these classes, or it was very few. And I said, you know what? This isn't worth it because I'm paying the instructor, and let me just get rid of it, and we'll use the room for something else. Cancellation after you got rid of spin. <laughs> Granted, I didn't charge them any more for it. It was for, for free. So anyways, the moral of the story is you're not going to compete even though these – Spin instructors and yogas were coming from the studios. Yep. The whole model, it was, didn't fit our model. Our model is a training gym. Yep. And so I would warn anybody that just because if you think about the four questions, did I, do I believe in spin? No, I probably didn't. I probably didn't believe in spin. I mean, as, as what? You know as, what I mean? Like the, as what? As sure, a supplemental. As a, as a, exactly. Right. A caloric burn. Sure. 
Yeah. We know what it does, but yeah. But here you are. You got these guys. They sit all day at work. They sit to drive. They sit. Now we're going to sit them down on a bike with a, you know, curved spine and we're going to spin away or, you know, I really didn't believe in it. Sure. Not the best way to provide the result you were looking for. Sure. Right. So that, that should have told me right away that wasn't a good idea. Right. And, and, and by the way, these four questions came up after I screwed up this deal. Yeah. They're hard lesson to learn. Yeah. And, and you know what? Everybody kind of goes through stuff like that and they, they make bad calls and you have to fix it. Right. To learn or, how to, or, or don't make them same. Yeah, mistake learn how to, to not make the same mistake again. So, so at the end of the day, I would really highly consider not doing that stuff. Now there is a model out there a business model, a gym model that I really like. Okay. And it's really interesting how it works. Um, and they had one of these types of models out here down in Scott in the old town Scottsdale called, um, fit Republic. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're out of business now and probably mostly because of the high rent district they were in, but this place was so cool. So it was a flat rate membership. I think it was 150 bucks a month and everything was unlimited. And it was basically a big giant circle you would go up an escalator, and in the center it was it was almost like a movie theater. The movie theaters okay. were on the outside, and then the, like the lobby, it was a smoothie bar kind of lounge in the middle. And they had five or six studios in there, and they had like these TV screens with like the schedule on. It was it was very well thought out. And you had a CrossFit studio, you had a yoga studio, and then you had a hot yoga studio. Then you had a TRX style studio, you had a kickboxing studio, and maybe one other thing. But it was it was bringing all these studios into one roof. Mm-hmm. And for the class model, that made a lot of sense. And you know, think about class pass, for example. All these people that do class pass, they they buy class pass so they can go to all these different places. different places. To get to sit, yeah. It was all under one roof. And I thought that was really cool. And sure. I think there's models out there that do this, but it, it was, I think it would be very easy to manage that sure. because it's a class-based thing and it's just come in work out and go home. It's cool, but that's not what we do. And it's not what a lot of you do, but I just thought maybe that, that was one thing that, you know, you're not going to compete in the training gym with a, with a spin studio in that model. You might be able to, Is that, if, that, <coughs> if, that, if that makes any sense. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought that, that was cool. So anyways, go back, going back to the uh, four questions, always ask yourself that when it comes to some equipment salesman walking in your door, some multi-level marketing supplement company, some essential oil kind of company thing coming in, uh, yoga, spin, any of these things yeah, that don't really, you know. We're shopping, bring in just additional services in-house. You know, maybe it was your idea that you're, hey, we want to provide more. Mm-hmm. Why? It's you Take it through the same set of questions. Yeah, yeah. So there you have it, guys. Go uh, go put everything through that lens and, and let us know how you do. And if you get a chance to, we'd love to get a, a review from you um, on, on iTunes. It'd be great. That's kind of like the the one that the go to. The go to. Um, we'd appreciate you guys. Thanks for the support. Uh, until next episode, guys. Keep changing lives. See you.